x square plus 2x minus 15 by x square minus 7x minus 18 is negative if and only if effectively solve for this inequality less than this is less than 0 x square plus 2x minus 15 is oops it is x plus 5 into x minus 3 divided by x square minus 7x minus 18 minus 9 plus 2 x minus 9 into x plus 2 it should be less than 0 and it going to think about this as roots on a number line so draw the number line this minus 5 work let's put 0 here minus 5 minus 2 3 and 9 these are the turning points for this so if x were greater than 9 then this 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 all would be positive the expression would be positive x were less than 9 but greater than 3 then x minus 9 would be negative these three are positive so here the expression would be positive here the expression would be negative the moment i hang on to this everything else also falls in place in this range it will be positive this range will be negative this range will be positive imagine this below minus 5 each of these terms is negative negative and negative positive negative and negative positive positive by positive positive so here it won't work here the inequality does not hold good the inequality we are solving for is this expression less than zero right so where does it work it works from minus 5 to minus 2 and 3 to 9 minus 5 to minus 2 3 to 9 perfect all less than no less than or equal to business it's clearly negative so life is easy minus 5 to minus 2 3 to 9 find all the roots roots are turning points and then we are done after that the number of integers n that satisfy the inequalities modulus of n minus 60 less than modulus of n minus 100 less than modulus of n minus 20 is very interesting first thing we need to know is if you have two points on the number line x and y then the distance between these two points is modulus of x minus y or modulus of y minus x one of the two doesn't matter and two. now we're going to treat this as this inequality and then this inequality then so let's say modulus of n minus 60 less than modulus of n minus 100 so let's put 60 here and 100 here so distance modulus of n minus 60 less than modulus of n minus 100 that is if i have n distance from 60 is less than distance from 100 right or think about this n were here distance from 60 would be less than distance from 100 if n were here 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 throughout it will work there will be a turning point the turning point will be at 80 modulus of 80 minus 60 is equal to modulus of 80 minus 100 so where will it work where will it hold good it will hold good when n is less than 80 n can be anywhere here modulus of n minus 60 be less than modulus of n minus 100 because 40 minus 60 modulus is 20 40 minus 100 modulus is 60 this tells us n is less than 80 Let's attack this one. So for this, we are thinking about 100 and 20. We know straight away that the turning point is 60. Distance from 100 is less than distance from 20. Or this, this number is closer to 100. Or n should be greater than 60. This one works when n is less than 80. That one works when n is greater than 60. We are looking for numbers greater than 60 less than 80 61 to 79 19 different numbers that's an answer 61 62 63 64 till 69 clearly we are looking at integers not a range so 19 different integers work 61 through to 79 right? the key point here is if you have two points x and y on the number line the distance between the two points is modulus of x minus y which is nothing but modulus of y minus x both are same identical chocolate Pieces are sold in boxes of two sizes, small and large. The large box is sold for twice the price of the small box. The selling price per gram of chocolate in the large box is 12% less than that in the small box. Then the percentage by which the weight of chocolate in the large box exceeds that in the small box is nearest to. Very interesting question. It is sold for twice. So small, large. And price if this is x this is 2x nice the selling price per gram so let's say we want to do the weight 
the weight of chocolate in the large box exceeds that in the small box. Weight, let's say, this is 100 and this is Y. And so that we can find the percentage difference straight away. This is a weight, 100 and Y. The selling price per gram of chocolate in the large box is 12% less than that in the small box. Price per gram, per weight. Right, this is X by 100. This is 2X by Y. Right? This is 2X by Y is 12% less than that in the small box. So X by 100 into 0.88 is 2X by Y. Done, we are through. X by 100 into 0.88 is 2X by Y. The X gets knocked off or Y equals 200 by 0.88 or 200 by 88 into 100. 100 by 44, 50 by 22, 25 by 11. 25 by 11 into 100, 25 by 11 should be was 2 times 3 by 11, another 2 times 30 by 11, 22 goes off and 7, it is 22.7, so somewhere around 227, that's what this number should be, 2.27, 227. So the large box is 2.27 times the small box, weight. So by what percentage? In the percentage by which the weight of the chocolate in the large box exceeds that of the small box is 127%. This calculation, this question, I made a huge blunder. I found the answer to be 227. I didn't find it in the choices. And then kept doing the question over and over again, which is a shame really, because this is 227 percentage of the weight in the small box or 127% more. From their part, I think they missed a trick by not including 227 in the choices. I would have marked that straight away and got a minus one for myself. I minus log square root of 1 plus x to the base 10 plus 4 log 1 minus x to the base 10 equals that. So phi minus log to the base 10 of square root of 1 plus x plus 4 log to the base 10 of square root of 1 minus x equals. This can be broken as log of 1 by square root of 1 plus x into 1 by square root of 1 minus x or this side is minus log of square root of 1 plus x minus log of square root of 1 minus x. Log AB is log A plus log B. Log of 1 by A is minus log A. Log of 1 by B is minus log B. 1 by B is B power minus 1. The idea we are using here. So I can move some logs this side or everything that side. I can shift something around minus log of 1 plus x minus log of 1 plus x these two will get cancelled or 5 equals minus log square root of 1 minus x minus 4 log square root of 1 minus x 5 equals minus 5 log of square root of 1 minus x or log of square root of 1 minus x to the base 10 is minus 1 or square root of 1 minus x is 10 power minus 1 which is 1 minus 1 minus x is 1 by 100 x is 99 by 100 we want to find 100 x 100 x equals 99 methodically solve this we're using two ideas log a b is log a plus log b next idea log of 1 by a is minus log a right so log 1 by a is minus of log a. Log a b is log a plus log b. A basket of two apples, four oranges and six mangoes costs the same as a basket of one apple, four oranges and eight mangoes. 2a plus 4o plus 6m equals 1a plus 4o plus 4m or a basket of 8 oranges and 7 mangoes equal to 8 oranges plus 7 mangoes. Then the number of mangoes in a basket of mangoes that are the same cost as the other, we have to get each in terms of the other. 
Let me see which equation works best. There's no apple at all in this. That should be a help. Eight oranges plus seven mangoes. I'm going to double this. I'm going to have eight oranges and seven mangoes. Six plus four, ten. Four plus four, eight. Well, let me see. Both have four oranges. So I'm going to use these two. Cancel the four oranges part. And then say two apples plus six mangoes equals one apple plus four mangoes or an apple equals let me just do two apples plus four oranges plus six mangoes one apple plus four oranges plus eight mangoes luckily enough this is eight i made that mistake you should be eight an apple equals two mangoes lovely that is helpful an apple is two mangoes we can plug that here so one apple two mangoes plus four oranges plus eight mangoes is eight oranges plus seven mangoes this is four oranges plus ten mangoes is eight oranges plus seven mangoes three mangoes equals four oranges an apple is two mangoes we can get everything in terms of mangoes let's do this apple is two mangoes orange is three mangoes is four oranges or one orange is three fourth of a mango then the number of mangoes in a basket of mangoes that has the same cost as the other basket essentially represent everything in terms of mangoes two apples two into two mangoes plus four oranges four into three by four mangoes plus six mangoes that is the cost of the first basket so this is four mangoes plus three mangoes plus six mangoes seven plus six thirteen should be the answer simple dealing with linear equation with four oranges and two of these knock that off oranges go off we have an equation in apples and mangoes get apples in terms of mangoes plug that in the next one get everything in terms of mangoes we are through the area of a regular hexagon is equal to area of an equal triangle of side 12 centimeters then the length in centimeters of each side of the hexagon and so a regular hexagon of side a area would be 6 times root 3 by 4 a square this is equal to area of equal triangle of side 12 equal to root 3 by 4 into 12 square is equal to this equate this we'll get a and patently many very regular question so this root 3 by 4, root 3 by 4 gets knocked off. 144 by 6 is 24 equals a square. a is root of 24. You can extract a 4 outside, 2 root 6. That is there, we are through. It is there, done. Then the length in centimeters of each side of the regular hexagon is 2 root 6. A regular hexagon is 6 equal triangles. That's it, done. Onion is sold for 5 consecutive months at the rate of 10, 20, 25, 25, and 50, respectively. So month, one, two, three, four, five. Price is rupees 10, 20, 25, 25, and 50. Nice. A family spends a fixed amount of money on onion for each of the first three months, then spends half that amount on onion for each of the next two months. Nice. Same amount and then half that amount. And so I'm going to take the half that amount thing as 100. I want to say amount was 100, 100, 200, 200, 200. Then number of kilograms is 20, 10, 8, 4, 2. Maybe we need not have selected 100, we could have selected 50, 50, 100, 100, 100. Life would have been simpler. Numbers are smaller. I plugged in this as 100 because I want a number that's a multiple of all of these. It's becoming 100 into 200. I know I'll, I'll deal with the integers. Life is simpler. And then spend half the average expense for onion in rupees per kilogram for the family over these five months. Uh, amount spent 600 plus 200, 800. Quantity 20, 30, 30, 40, 44. 800 by 44, which is 400 by 22, which is 200 by 11. 200 by 11 is 18 point something. 11, 18 to 11 is 198, 18 point something. Done. 
plug in a number which makes the multiplication or computation simpler life becomes easier if r is a constant such that x modulus of x square minus 4x minus 13 equals r has exactly three distinct roots then the value of r is i made a mess of this question so i'm going to take revenge on this not that it's worth something so x square minus 4x minus 13 uh, it looks like it cannot be factorized it cannot be it is not required that we factorize this fine so the idea is it has exactly three roots one is it, suppose this were equal to say 10 what am i doing i'm saying this is equal to plus 10 gives us a solution this equal to minus 10 gives a solution that means plus 10 will give us two roots minus 10 will give us two roots what's happening here we have only three roots it is telling us that put us plus 10 you'll get two put us minus 10 you'll get only one root or the discriminant goes to zero or the other way around that's what this question is saying right so let's, let's simplify this thing so let's complete this square x square minus 4x plus 4 is x minus 2 whole square minus 17 equals r or modulus of x minus 2 whole square minus 17 Oops. equals r or x minus 2 whole square minus 17 equal to r x minus 2 whole square minus 17 equals minus r this is what you're solving for effectively or x minus 2 whole square equals r minus 17 or x minus 2 whole square equals minus r minus 17 this will give us two roots this could give us two roots one of these two gives us only one root x is only two that's effectively what we're trying to solve for when will that work one of these has to go for go to zero if x square 17 this will go to zero x square minus 17 will go to 0. So the value of r 17 works done. This goes to 0. x minus 2 whole square is 0 has only one root x equal to 2. There if x is 17 with some other value. I don't know whether that works. Let me just check that out. x is 17 takes us to 0 or x minus 2 whole square minus 17 equals minus 17. Minus r minus 17 minus 17 minus 17. Let me just check this. We put a 17. Very interesting. It should, should go to 0. This goes to 0. x equal to 2 works. What is e? x equal to 2 will work. Is there a scenario where this goes to minus 17 at all? x minus 2 whole square minus 17 equals minus 17. Sorry, it should be minus r, r plus 17 minus r plus 17. r equal to 17 works r equal to minus 17 so what's one of those will give two roots the other will will will, will take care of itself so there are there are three roots possible only when x is 17 this works this is r plus 17 minus r plus 17 so three roots are possible when uh, when x when r is 17. Um, uh, amal purchases some pence at rupees eight each to sell these he hires an employee at a fixed wage he sells 100 of these pence at rupees 12 each. The remaining pence are sold at rupees 11 each. Then he makes a net profit of rupees 300. While he makes a net loss of rupees 300, the remaining pence are sold at 9 each. Very nice. So 100 he sells at 12. Remaining he spends at, at 11, he makes 300. If he sells at 11, he loses, sorry, if he sells at 9, he loses 300 straight away it's so super useful if there's a swing of two rupees per pen i go from plus 300 to minus 300 the difference between the amount of money i make is 600 at two rupees to the pen instead of selling at 11 i sell at nine or i make two rupees per pen lesser in this two rupees per pen lesser 600 rupees swing or the number of pens equals 300 300 into 2 is 600 i'm losing 2 rupees per pen and i end up making uh, a loss of uh, a swing of 600 from making a profit of 300 i go to loss of 300 so if i reduce the price by 2 rupees per pen i lose 600 rupees or there are 300 pens and the wage of employee in inr so we have to come back to the employee cost amal purchases some pens at 8 each 
he hires an employee at a fixed age he sells 100 of these at 12 so let's do this 100 pence at rupees 12 and 300 pence at rupees 11 so this is 1200 this is 3300 4500 is a total amount of money he makes this is a profit of 300 he makes 300 rupees so his total cost is 4500 minus 300 which is 4200 in selling 400 pence but he buys them at rupees 8 each 400 into 8 is rupees 3200 so his total cost of purchase is 3200 but his total landed cost is 4200 r it has cost him 1000 bucks to sell cost of production plus cost of selling is the total cost cost of production or cost of making or cost of purchase is 3200 but his total cost is 4200 or the missing 1000 bucks is the wage of the employee it's take cost him 1000 rupees for the act of selling this Anil invests some money at a fixed rate of interest compounded annually. If the interest accrued during the second and third years are 806.25 and 866.72 respectively, the interest accrued in INR during the fourth year is nearest to. Very nice juicy question. Let's say year one, year two, year three, year four. You have a principal, interest, amount. Thank you. This is P, this is P into 1 plus X, where X is R by 100, rate by 100. This is P into 1 plus X, this is P into 1 plus X, whole square. This is P into 1 plus X, whole square, P into 1 plus X, whole cube. P into 1 plus X, whole cube, P into 1 plus X, whole power 4. You know the amount moves. Whatever principle was into 1 plus x, the amount. Whatever principle was into 1 plus x, the amount. Whatever principle was into amount, 1 plus x, the amount. And so that's how the, the compound interest thing works. That's why the compounding kicks in. I have some principle into 1 plus x is my new amount at the end of the year. This becomes a principle for year 2. Then becomes like this. This becomes the principle for year 3. This becomes like this. So what are the interest? Interest here is p into x year 1. What are the interest here? This is p into 1 plus x the whole square minus p into 1 plus x. This minus this amount minus principal is the interest accrued in the third year, in the second year. Same process here, same process here. And so p into 1 plus x whole square minus p into 1 plus x is p into 1 plus x into 1 plus x minus 1 or p into 1 plus x into x. Next year, it's going to be 1 plus x whole cube minus 1 plus x whole square. I can extract a 1 plus x whole square outside and then I'll have x remaining. I can extract a 1 plus x whole cube outside, I'll have x remaining. R, but simply, if I'm tracking only interest. Year 1 would be p into x. Year 2 would be p into x into 1 plus x. Year 3 would be p into x into 1 plus x the whole square year 4 would be px into 1 plus x the whole cube the interest accrued in each year basically a higher base into the same rate of interest higher base into the same rate of interest so if my principal at the beginning of each year goes in a geometric progression so too will interest just whatever the principal is into x is interest right so this principle into x is this interest, other way of thinking about it. This principle into x is interest, this principle into x is interest. Or the interest is a geometric progression. Okay. So we have 806.25, 866.72. What is this number? This number is going to be 866.72 by 806.25 into 866.72 things is 1.075 or something like seven and a half percent uh, interest rate i don't remember the answer at the top of my head but this we can compute the funda is very simple just plug it in calculate the answer it should be done i think that, that this number is 1.075 
uh, multiply by that whatever the answer is that's what we're looking at 86 into 3 by 4 into 88 66 plus this 64 plus this 930 this should be the answer that my gut feel the strength of an indigo solution in percentages is equal to the amount of indigo in grams per 100 cc of water two 800 cc bottles are filled with indigo solutions two 800 cc one is 33 percent other is 17 percent pardon how it looks equal volume 800 uh, cc each a part of the solution from the first bottle is thrown away and replaced by an equal volume of the solution from the second bottle the strength of we throw this away and take from this and put it to this equally. So this will be back to 800 ml. The strength of the indigo solution in the first bottle has now changed to 21%. This is now 21%. Obviously it will fall. What do we do? We say, okay, 33% has been mixed with 17% to get 21%. In what ratio would it be mixed? This is 12, this is 4, 4 is to 12 or 1 is to 3. Nice. So 1 is to 3, so in the 800 ml of the new thing, 1 should be 33%, 3 units should be 17% or <coughs> in this 21%, this 200 ml of 33% solution and 600 ml of 17% solution. What are the questions? It says, then the volume in CC of the solution left in the bottle, solution left in the bottle. So you're taking some from here and filling this in. We've taken 600 ml, 800 ml to start with. We've taken out 600, remaining 200 ml will be there. And there's 200, very nice, very juicy. Amar, Akbar and Anthony are working on a project, working together. Amar and Akbar can complete the project in one year. I hate these questions. They can tell us Amar, Bimal and, and, and Charles, right? So Amar and Akbar can finish it in one year or what they can do is one by 12. 12 months to the year. So they can finish one twelfth of the task in a month. Akbar and Antony, Akbar and Antony can complete it in 16 months or in one month they can finish one by sixteenth of this. Antony and Amar, Amar and Antony can finish it in two years, one by 24. Nice. The person who's neither the fastest nor the slowest works alone. The time and months he will take to complete 1 by 12 and 1 by 24 are the two extremes 1 by 16 is the middle number so we are looking at Amar speed the missing number and Amar is neither the fastest nor the slowest Amar plus Akbar can finish 1 12th or the slowest is Antony Amar plus Antony can will take 24 months or the quickest is Akbar or we want to find Amar speed from these equations okay. Amar plus Akbar is this, add all three up, two times Amar plus Akbar plus Antony. The LCM is 48, 4 by 48 plus 3 by 48 plus 2 by 48, just 9 by 48, which is 3 by 16. Just twice of this or Amar plus Akbar plus Antony is 3 by 32. We want to find Amar from this, subtract this, we are through. From 3 by 32, subtract 1 by 16 or 2 by 32, we will get 1 by 32. Or Amar 1 by 32 or Amar alone working will take 32 hours or 32 months, 2 years and 8 months. What are we doing here? Amar plus Akbar in 1 month can finish 1 12th of the task. Akbar plus Antony in 1 month can finish 1 16th of the task. Amar plus Antony in one month can finish 1 by 24 of the task. The numbers this is the largest, this is the smallest. I don't even have to process this. The middle number is the one where the slowest and the fastest are working together. That means the middle speed guy is this missing guy. So we want to find Amar. Add everything up. We'll get two times Amar plus Akbar plus Antony. Divide by two. We'll get Amar plus Akbar plus Antony. From that subtract this, we'll get Amar's number, which turns out to be 1 by 32 or Amar in a month can do 1 by 32 of the task or to finish the task it will take 32 months time in months should be 32 the number of groups are three or more distinct numbers that can be chosen from 1 2 3 4 
5, 6, 7, 8. So that the groups always include 3 and 5, while 7 and 8 are never included. So they should always include 3 and 5. So you have 3 and 5. Never have 7 and 8. While 7 and 8 are never included. So 3 and 5 are in. So we could have 1, 2, 4, 6 may or may not be in. 7 and 8 are never included. So we could select between 1, 2, 4, 6. Out of this any category could be in. 7 and 8 are never included. We need to be very careful about this. We could have only one. We could have two out of these, three out of these, four out of these. Each of them could be in or out, in or out, in or out. At least one of them should be selected. And then we think about uh, how many ways this can be done. And so 7 and 8 are never included together. It's very interesting. 7 and 8 are never included together. That means I could have 1, 2, 4, 7. I could have 2, 4, 6, 8. I cannot have 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 7 alone could be there, 8 alone could be there. Only 7 and 8 together cannot be there. We said 7 and 8 are never included. Then it's easy. Think about 1, 2, 4, 6, figure out the combinations we have done. 7 alone can be there, 8 alone could be there. So what do we do? We say, hey, let's count everything. So I'll have 1, 2, 4, 6, 7, 8. Three elements should be there at least three, three or more. That means already two are there. Out of this one, two, three, four, five, six, at least one should be there. Each of them could be in or out, in or out, in or out. Two part six possibilities. From this we subtract one. The one possibility where nothing is selected. So two part six minus one. We have 63 subsets possible that are at least three or three elements and three and five are included. Now within this we'll say, we'll remove everything where we have 3, 5, 7 and 8. Everything that includes 3, 5, 7 and 8. That means 3, 5, 7, 8 out of 1, 2, 4, 6. Any 1 could be there, any 2 could be there, any 3 could be there, all 4 could be there, none could be there. All of those possibilities will remove. That means out of 1, 2, 4, 6. In, out, in, out, in, out in out all possibilities 2 power 4 possibilities 16 different combinations will remove because all 16 of them will have 3 5 7 and 8 that's not possible so from this 63 we'll knock off those 16 to give ourselves 47 so 47 subsets will have 3 and 5 will have at least 3 elements will not have 7 and 8 both together the other way of doing this count everything with 1 2 4 6 count everything with 7 but not 8 and then 8 but not 7, 7 but not 8, 8 but not 7, everything with 1, 2, 4, 6. In all of this, we need to keep in mind that we do not want to count any three elements of set, uh, any two elements of set, at least three elements need to be there. That's the other way of going about it, which is also possible, it's also doable. A circle of diameter 8 inches is inscribed in a triangle ABC, where ABC is 90. Lovely. A, B, C, 90. B, C is 10. Diameter 8. Or radius is 4. This is 4. This is 4. This is 6. This is 6. These two should be X and X. So, 10 square plus X plus 4 whole square equals X plus 6 whole square. Solve this, we should get the answer. Or these two are 2 apart and 10 is one of the 5s. 5, 12, 13 into 2. 10, 24, 26. We are done. 10, 24, 26 is the triangle we are looking for. That means we are looking at 10, 24, 26. This triangle will take all the boxes. Area of the triangle is half into 10 into 24, 12 into 10, 120 square units. Half into base into height, half into 10 into 24, 120 square units. Why are we putting this in radius? This is 90, this is 90, so square. These two are equal, tangents from a point. These two are equal, radius. Tangents are equal, 6 and 6. Tangents are equal, 6 and 6. Then Pythagoras theorem, we are through.
Suppose the length of each side of a regular hexagon of A, B, C, D, E, F is 2 cm. T is the midpoint of C, D. Then the length of A, T in centimeters is excellent, excellent question. A regular hexagon in Each side measures two. T is the midpoint of CD. The length AT of length of AT in centimeters. So let's draw this. So this is two. This is two. This is one. Hmm. Very interesting because we 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 don't we don't know. We want to find AT. If there a diagonal, it is easy. The AD measures four. AC is easy. AC measures. This is 4, this is 2 root 3. That is nice and simple. But we want to find AT. That's going to be interesting. How do we find AT? AD measures 4. AC measures 2 root 3. We want to find AT. Remember, AT is not perpendicular to CD. We can't just plug in Pythagoras theorem and simplify. That doesn't work. We cannot work like that. So we need to figure out some other mechanism of, of, of cracking this. So mid T is the midpoint of C D, one and one. We can use some some trigonometric ratio and then, and then figure this out. We can find the angles and simplify. But I, hey, it's still tough. It's still tough because can, this is sixty, and so this is thirty. So this angle is thirty. We know two sides. We can find the. We know all three sides, so we can find that angle, but we want to find AT, not anything else. Very interesting question. This angle is 30. This angle is 90. 2 root 3 and 1. So ACT is a right angle triangle. This is 1. This is 2 root 3. 80 perhaps we can find because it's 120 degrees the internal angle. This is 30, 30, 120, 30, 90. So 2 root 3 whole square, 3 into 2, 12, 12 square plus 1 square, it adds up to 13. This is a hypotenuse, 1, 1. So square root of 13 should work. Let me just check that. Perfect. And so I'm just going to go over this method because I think I've rushed through a little bit. I'm trying to find, first of all, I know that in a regular hexagon of side A, this diagonal is 2A, this diagonal is root 3A. Just Pythagoras theorem, no rocket science there. Plugging in that idea, 2, 2, 2 root 3, 4. In a regular hexagon, each internal angle is 120. So this is 120. So nice of this triangle, 30 and 30. This whole angle is 120. This is 30, this is 90. This diagram where, where I made the mistake and I looked at this question and I kept on thinking angle ATC is 90. It's not the case. Angle ACT is 90. This is 2 root 3. This is 1. This is, this is 90. So this, this is a hypotenuse of that triangle. Square root of 2 root 3 whole square plus 1 square. Square root of 12 plus 1 root 13. I did all kinds of nonsense for this question. Suppose hospital A admitted 21 less COVID infected patient. I remember looking at this question, it should be 21 fewer, not less. COVID infected patient, patient than hospital B. So hospital A, B, number of patients. This is X, this is X plus 21. The sum of recovery days for patients in hospitals A and B were 200 and 152 respectively. Number of days, sum of all, this was 200, this was 152. Nice. If the average recovery days for patient in hospital A was 3 more than, so the average, 200 by X and 152 by X plus 21. This was 3 more than this. Average recovery days for patients admitted in hospital A was 3 more than the average in hospital B. Or 200 by X was 152 by X plus 21 plus 3. We spent an inordinate amount of time trying to crack this. 
by finding factors for 200, factors of 150 to seeing where they would fit. 152 is a very interesting number. It is 76 into 2, 38 into 4, 19 into 8. So all I thought was, somehow I have to have a multiple of 19. There are only 5, 6 multiples of 19 that work in this territory. That is x plus 21. Find this, it will work. It didn't work. It drove me mad. I don't want to do this more proper way. 200 by x minus 152 by x plus 21 equals 3. So we'll take a uh, 200 x plus 21 into 200 minus 152 x. I'm just cross multiplying equals 3 x into x plus 21. This is 48 x 21 into 200 plus 48 x equals 3 x into x plus 21. You can cancel at 3. This becomes 7. This becomes 16. 7 into 200 plus 16x equals x square plus 21x. So x square plus 5x minus 7 into 200 equal to 0. 7 into 200, again write it as 14 into 100, 28 into 50, 56 into 25. Take one five, put it here. Take the seven, put it there. Forty into thirty-five, and then different combinations like that. The difference should be five. By factorizes, forty into thirty-five works well. So x minus forty into x plus thirty-five. Sorry, x plus forty. into x minus 35 equal to 0. x could be minus 40 or plus 35. It cannot be minus 40, it is plus 35. It took me a while to factorize this. It took me a while to factorize this because 7 into 200, I kept breaking it. I always kept both 5's this side. The two 5's sitting in the product. Put one 5 here, one 5 there. That's when the difference can be 5. I should have figured it out. I didn't. Put one five this side, one five that side, it becomes easy to factorize. So x is 35. If you look at this, the number of days here, 200 by 35. And 152 by 56. Right? So 200 by 35 is 40 by 7. 152 by 56 is 19 by 7. Subtract this. This is 27 by 3. Which is 3. Which is wonderful. This is not an integer. This is not an integer. The difference is an integer. That's why all my cute methods of trying to find factors where I lost minutes uh, completely came back to bite me. So guessing from the answer, going from the choices, trying to factorize it, thinking about integers, just doing natural numbers, just doing a plug and play. Not only did it not work, it, 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 it wound me up, lost me time and stressed me out for the, the rest of the paper. The amount Nita and Gita together earn in a day equals what Sita alone earns in six days. Okay. N plus G equal to 6S. The amount Sita and Nita together earn in a day equals what Gita alone earns in two days. Sita and Nita S plus N is 2G. The ratio of the daily earnings of the one who earns the most to the one who earns the least. N plus G is 6S. Uh, S plus N is 2G. Subtract this from this N will go off. G minus S. 6S minus 2G. 3G equals 7S. Nice. We've got one thing going. Plug that in somewhere. S plus N. S is 3 by 7 G. 3 by 7 G plus N equals 2 G. N equals 14 by 7 minus 3 by 7 is 11 by 7 G. S is 3 by 7 G. 3 by 7 G. 11 by 7 G. G. Those are the three earnings. This is small, this is high. The ratio of the daily earnings is the one who earns the most to the one who learns the least. 11 is to 3.
Can I try to be cute with this? Try to do something with integers? You just brute force it, you get the answer. The natural numbers are divided into groups 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and so on. And the sum of the numbers in the 15th group is equal to. Very interesting. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and so on. The first group has one element, second group has three elements, third group has five elements, and so on. The third first group ends with one. Second group ends with two square. Third group ends with three square. Fourth group ends with four square and so on. Or fifteenth group should end with fifteen square. And we want to find sum of all elements. Fifteenth group, how many elements will it have? The third group has five elements. First group has one element. Second group has three elements, 2 and minus 1. Fifteenth group would have 29 elements. 15 into 2, minus 1. The other way of thinking about it, if I can imagine the fourteenth group. The fourteenth group will end with 14 square. So this ends with 196. This ends with 225. Manning all numbers from 197 to 225. 25 plus 4, 29 numbers are there, going from 197 to 225. This is a simple sequence of numbers. I can add all numbers till 225, all natural numbers till 225, subtract all numbers till 196, any 10 plus 1 by 2, any 10 plus 1 by 2. Or I can say I'm doing 29 by 2 into 197 plus 225. I'm putting them in pairs, there are 14 and a half pairs. 29 by 2 into 197 plus 225, whatever that turns out to be. 29 by 2, 197 plus 225, 2, 10 plus 2, 12, 2, 1, 2 plus 2, 4, 4, 22, or 211 into 29 should end in 9. This is the answer. 6, 1, 1, 9, it should work. Anu, Vinu and Manu can complete in 15 days. So Anu can do 1 15th of the task. Vinu can finish 1 12th of the task. Manu can do 1 20th of the task. Vinu works every day. Anu works only on alternate days starting from the first day. So Anu works 1 3 5. And Manu works only on alternate days starting from the second day. 2 4 6. Then in how many days will the task get completed? The number of days needed to complete the work. So day odd days Anu and Vinu work, even days Manu and Vinu work. And so odd days we have 1 by 15 plus 1 by 12. Even days we have 1 by 20 plus 1 by 12. Or this is 4 by 60 plus 5 by 60 which is 9 by 60. Not writing it as 3 by 20. Because this is 3 by 60 plus 5 by 60, which is 8 by 60. Nice, wonderful. So odd days 9 by 60 get done, even days 8 by 60 get done. So day 1, 9 by 60, day 2, 8 by 60, together 17 by 60. And so 3, 4, same, another 17 by 60, 5, 6, same, another 17 by 60. If we add all this, we get 51 by 60. If we go to day 8, it will become 68 by 60, bigger. Day 7, we add another 9 by 60, we have 3. So 9, 8, 9, 8, 9. 9, 8, 9, 8, 9, 8, 9. So 4 days of 9 by 60, 3 days of 8 by 60, take us through to 1. 7 days totally is the answer. How many 3 digit numbers are greater than 100? All three digit numbers are 100 or more. So only 100 is ambiguity. And increase by 198 when the three digits are arranged in reverse order. So we have ABC and CBA. We subtract this, we subtract 100C plus 10B plus A minus 100A plus 10B plus C. We get 99C minus 99A is 198 or C minus A is 2. We have a three digit number where the units place is two more than the hundredth place. 
So we flip it. This will become two more than that. The difference become 198. And so, R, we're looking at a number like some 1 dash 3, 2 dash 4, 3 dash 5, 4 dash 6, 5 dash 7, 6 dash 8, 7 dash 9. One of these numbers. Any one of these will work. How many numbers are from 1 dash 3? It could be 103, 113, 123, 133, etc. 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 10 possible numbers. With middle digit is no constraint on B. B can take all values from 0 to 9. So 10 numbers here, 10 numbers here, 10 here, 10, 10, 10, 10. 70 different numbers are possible. Two trains cross each other in 14 seconds when running in opposite directions on parallel tracks. The faster train is 160 meters long and cross the lamp post in 12 seconds. It's the faster train speed is 160 by 12 meters per second. 80 by 6 or 40 by 3 meter per second. Nice. The speed of the other train is 6 kilometers per hour less than the faster one. Kilometers per hour. Difference in the speed 6 into 5 by 18 meters per second or 5 by 3 meters per second so slower train speed is 5 by 3 less than this 35 by 3 meters per second the two trains cross each other when running in opposite directions on parallel tracks so relative speed is 40 by 3 plus 35 by 3 meters per second 75 by 3 which is 25 meters per second right. and they take 14 seconds to cross each other or relative distance is 25 meters per second into 14 seconds 25 into 14 0 10 350 meters the relative distance is 350 meters. The first train is 160 meters long. The relative distance, they are crossing each other. Like this. That means this should have come somewhere here. This should have crossed over to this point. Exact same point. So from a point like this, they have crossed over like this. Relative distance is some of the length of the two trains. This is 350 totally. One train is 160 meters long. The other one, the speed of the other train is 6 kilometers per hour less than the faster one. Its length is remaining 190 meters. X0 is 1. X1 is 2. Xn plus 2 is 1 plus Xn plus 1. Xn so x2 is 1 plus x1 by x0 1 plus 2 by 1 which is 3 x2 is 3 x3 1 plus previous term divided by this 1 plus 3 4 by 2 2 x4 1 plus 2 divided by this 1 plus 2 by 3 This is 1 plus 3 by 2. X5, 1 plus 1 by 2, 2 by 2, 1. X6, 1 plus 1 by 1, 2 by 1, 2. And so on. And there's some, some pattern here. The next 2, 0, 2, 1 is equal to. Very interesting. Each term is generated by the previous two terms. That much I know. This is generated by plugging in something here. This is generated by plugging in something here. This is generated by plugging in the rule here. The moment a pattern recurs, after that it will become a cycle. So if I see a 2, 3 somewhere, this 2, 3 generates a 2, that 2, 3 will generate a 2. And so, so x7, 1 plus 2, 3 by 1, 3. x8, 1 plus 3, 4 by 2, 2. 1, 2, 3, 2, 1, 1, 2, 3, 2. 2, 3, 2. Or 1, 2, 3, 2, 1, 1. 1, 2, 3, 2, 1. 1, 2, 3, 2, 1. 1, 2, 3, 2, 1. The moment I have a 1, 2, 
everything else will repeat a 1 2 generates a 3 a 2 3 generates a 2 a 3 2 will generate a 1 a 2 1 will generate a 1 so moment two elements repeat everything will repeat after that so this goes in cycles of 5 so x0 1 2 3 4 x5 1 2 3 4 x 2021 at least a remainder 1 on division by 5 how it should be here the second step of the cycle it is 2 the mistake I did, it all, it did all this and then I said cycles of 5, I assume that x2 is starting with x1, starting with x0, so something to be careful about in the last step also, we are starting with x0, so the answer is 2.